Greetings fellow mayors, this is Captain Obvious and welcome back to Noye Port City, a narrative gameplay experience. Today we are going to go over the ups and downs and work around with the new game mechanics of the plazas and promenades DLC. We will start off by unlocking structures from the new DLC but first we need to pay attention to our current bank at 73 million with a positive weekly income and when we look into our economy tab notice that we have a fixed park expense at around 5,000 while we have an average of around 1.7 or about 2k uh, weekly income in our park this information is important to keep in mind because the new DLC mechanics is just going to wreck your economy but we are here to find a workaround so let's start by creating our pedestrian district then let's uh, look at the maintenance cost uh, and it says here which a pedestrian area's maintenance cost is based on its size so if we were to make this bigger you will notice that the cost of this will also increase so now look at that now it's 400 and before it was less than 100 so this really really hurts simply because there is currently no value there is no return value you get absolutely nothing and all that happened when creating this is you just incurred an expense this may seem like really small but look at the area the area is just small here i mean eventually you want to be adding more of these things and it's just going to get larger so therefore we need to be very careful on how we zone our areas so we will keep this small okay and then if we look at it again you can see that these things are still locked so our maintenance is now low again and then so this opens up this which is a small pedestrian area uh, service points when I plop it down now if we look into it we have unlocking uh, buildings here so these are the service points we simply just need to have uh, services picked up and then if we scroll further down there are plazas to unlock and then there are zone buildings and lastly there are the tourism buildings which is extremely hard or difficult to unlock simply because let's say this goes up to 100 it could actually go back down so you need to maintain the number of tourists in your city or in that pedestrian area as well so the maximum is 500 or the final uh, building will be at 500 okay so let's start by unlocking uh, this one the flower plaza uh, or the plazas so this one says you need to have a pedestrian area with a land value bonus of 300 and that so the the mat the last one is at 450 and what i'm going to do is i'm going to pause and i so basically you need to find an area that has a lot of uh happiness or land value so let's take a look at the map and so this area is actually pretty happy but the best place to find your location is where there are already parks and things that will improve the area so i have this one right here so we had we created our school so this has a lot of park items which increases happiness and of course the the school itself will increase happiness so there's a lot of parks here so now what i'm going to do is we are going to extend uh don't mind the mess so right now i'm on pause because when you create this it's going to increase the land value so now okay so i'm just going to paint this in and then i'm going to cut it out oops i'm going to close this because we only need this area all right so let's uh, focus in on this so this is the school i'm going to just you know put the whole thing so you notice these things are starting to break the reason for that is because these are uh, park items so they cannot uh, overlap each other so this is the gazebo so we need to actually make this smaller okay 
So now we have our area here. It is uh, safe or actually let's go ahead and check the cost now. So now the cost with that new area is at 753. And right now, absolutely no value, right? So we're gonna press play. And with this, so it's a pedestrian area and I am going to upgrade the roads with this and I'm going to choose the blue stone and then we're just going to simply upgrade uh select roads so so this if you look at this this is the entrance to the school so this one go goes around and this area it makes sense to make this into uh, pedestrian roads because you don't necessarily want vehicles to go in there so it's a really neat thing that you could do this okay so i created that and then this one uh, we could leave as is. So the idea now is all the vehicles would not enter there. Uh, only uh, service vehicles there, like a police and whatnot will enter these areas. Okay, so now let's check what happened. So if we go back here, check our pedestrian area, unlocking, and instantly it's all unlocked. Why? Because let's check the area. So it's at uh land value bonus um let's check our land value it's at pretty high and look how green that is that is the brightest green in the whole map simply because uh the pedestrian area increases uh land value and with all the the buildings here that increases happiness it totally maxed out so we were able to instantly unlock that building all right there's something else i want to do i want to upgrade these uh uh these trees so and i will choose just putting a bush instead because i don't necessarily want it to be too high or too tall because i want to be able to recognize the area okay so now uh, again the question is what value did we get from this this looks more aesthetically pleasing and it's it makes sense where there are no vehicles running here so it looks really neat but we still have that insane expense we still have that in expense of 73 this still doesn't seem like a lot but remember we only made one area you want to have fun with these with this dlc so it's going to uh increase even more and then you're gonna have to ask yourself again what value does it have in return other than aesthetic all right in any case let's go ahead and do the next thing to unlock so if we look down uh so this is not moving at all which is fine because there is nothing there there's nothing here to pick up um so if we go down to zone building so we're going to start with the residential zone landmark so what you need is 2000 residents living in uh, residential buildings with pedestrian streets so 2000 uh, i'm gonna do two things one is i want to upgrade uh, these buildings uh, i find them a little too tall and it's it starts to overwhelm the area this is my focus this is my main focus and these guys are just trying to hog the tension with their height so i'm going to change uh, these into the mid-rise wall-to-wall -wall building so we are going to create a new district so i'm going to create oop, that that is a pedestrian area we're going to create a new district and then from here we are going to change the area so the residential so first you, you need to know what what type is here so this this is local and organic uh, commercial area and we have just standard um, residential area and that's the one that I want to change and this I want to maintain as is so if we look back here I am going to change this into wall-to-wall -wall residential and then we're going to maintain uh, the local and organic produce and if there's any offices we're gonna make that wall-to-wall uh, -wall as well okay so we have that established and now all we need to do is simply overwrite them so if i go if i do this they will eventually dezone like so and they would replace the area uh, the thing about this is you don't want to do this too quickly otherwise you're going to have a massive death wave so 
I'm going to do this slowly and I'll get back to you when we have uh, the whole thing finished. So before I go too far, notice our populations at 34. We started at 35 and of course when we dezone, it's going to take a while for new sims to move in. So we're, yeah, we are really going to take a hit and also our income is going to drop because the, the, the previous buildings are already earning income and they are uh, relatively high level. So now it's basically starting from the beginning. So this is why I'm doing this slowly yet surely. Okay, so this is our before area with all the tall buildings and now this is after. So now we could really see this grand mall much more clearly, which is my objective and on why I wanted to do that. Okay, so now what, what did we do? We, we use the wall to wall uh, buildings. However, they're not actually placed uh, side by side. So but that's actually fine because this is not like the European buildings where it's just completely flat. This actually has a design on the side. So it's it's actually OK if it, it's not uh, a completely flat road. Uh, it could be curved and it will still look fine. So this it still works uh, as intended. So it really looks neat from the side as well. Okay, so that's uh, part one, and now we are going to improve this thing where we are, we are going to unlock uh, the first one, residential zone. So what I'm going to do is first, we are going to increase our area here, and I want to do selective areas. So for example, so the one benefit of uh, the new DLC is you can control the, the routes of your... Uh, your vehicle so for instance here i'm going to zone just this area so this will be our new uh, area for uh oops new area for pedestrians and i only want this road so from here we are going to upgrade that road and we are again going to use the bluestone pedestrian and there we are so this is one part of it and then I am going to move up here as well. So the idea of this, of course, vehicles can no longer take this. Instead, they're going to go around here. So I kind of controlled where I wanted vehicles to go. So we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, let me pause first because I don't necessarily want this to be affected. So we're going to go across. Okay, so my target area is just down here. I don't want this to be affected because this is going to be our main road over here. So this is where vehicles may actually drive on and this will be our pedestrian. So I need to make sure that this is unaffected and we are keeping it paused because the land value of this will spike up and then later on we may get alerts where the land value is too low and then they will abandon. So it's important to make your zones while it's paused okay so let's just continue zoning okay let's take a closer look at what we zoned at so that is at the bottom here and now we can convert this into our uh, pedestrian roads so i'm going to go ahead and highlight this okay so now we kind of control the direction of our traffic so it's only going to go here and there so it will not go this way some of the our structures kind of disappeared here i'm not sure why this disappeared anyhow let's go ahead and check what happened interestingly enough our commercial zone is the one that's affected when i was trying to target residential that's uh, ironic well, hey, at least we got one. So now we need to get the residential zone mark area. If we look closer at the fine print, it says in a pedestrian area with a residential area focus. Keyword focus. In our initial pedestrian area, we intended to unlock the residential zone landmark, 
but the district actually has more commercial than residential so as you can see here it's definitely much more commercial therefore in order to unlock the residential we will create a new pedestrian district so i will just create one here and then we will put in that service building and while the game is on pause i will create our district area here and i will target where all our residential are and let's not forget to clip off the things that we don't need so if you look closer i made sure that only this area will have our pedestrian streets and the reason why i did not did not put it here is because we have this cemetery and they need to be on a road otherwise it will not function and let's also take notice of the level that they are they are level four and the reason why you have to keep it on keep it on pause is if you keep it on play while creating your district everything it hits it will increase one level more or less all right so i made that and now let's actually put in our pedestrian roads i'm going to keep it on pause so you can see how inst instantaneously it will upgrade okay so this looks right so you see there's errors but that's because the game is on pause all right so i'm going to click on this so if we look oops so this one is not even active so we can we'll use this one so we can see as soon as i click on pause this should unlock all right ready three two one and it's going up there you go it was instant and that is how you unlock the residential zone landmark so now as you can see as i mentioned they're going to definitely level up so they're all level four and now they are level five well not all of them but majority of them okay so let's move on and unlock the office uh, zone landmark guys if you are enjoying the video so far don't forget to like subscribe and leave a comment it's the best and easiest way to support content creators and it encourages them to continue making more videos again let's read the fine print so it says to unlock the office zone landmark we need a pedestrian area with a workplace area focus and have 2,000 people working at office or industry buildings on pedestrian streets so again it says focus so we will create a new ped uh, pedestrian district once again right over here okay so we created our new pedestrian area and let's not forget to actually upgrade the roads okay so we're not really focusing on making it fancy we just want to unlock the landmarks so uh the reason why we are using the generic industries is because they have more workers compared to offices so i'm going to zone just a few offices here so you can see the the difference and uh, another reason why we are using industry uh, generic industries is to able to unlock the other uh, the service point building so this these things you, you need 12 cargo trucks and all of that and this is the fastest way but in reality you don't you don't necessarily need to use uh, the larger ones if your pedestrian area can handle using the small uh versions is actually better uh, because at least you're not overspending all right so we're just going to wait for this to upgrade let's actually check out its progress so we have some there and we simply just need to continue to make this bigger and increase it as needed so i'm looking at this so you're gonna see me uh, increasing it until we eventually have this unlocked so i noticed these alerts or yeah we have alerts high cargo traffic and uh, so let's go ahead and check if we are able to unlock a few okay this one's nearly unlocked so we just basically need to add more so that this doesn't appear okay so this is unlocked garbage has yet to unlock but that's completely fine so this actually has a garbage facility so if you look at this small pedestrian area it has garbage trucks 
and so far we don't really need that many so it's not a huge concern it's okay if you don't unlock it and there we go the office zone is now unlocked we have a few abandoned but that doesn't matter all of this will be demolished uh, let's check if we unlock anything else so we unlock other service buildings so even unlock the small garbage so this one again don't really worry if you don't unlock that so now we are going to do the uh, tourist building uh, buildings unlock so you need a consistent of 500 tourists in your city for this to work or in your city and in a pedestrian area so how do we do this first we we need to know how many tourists are in your city so to do that we go click here go to tourism and we actually only have 35 tourists and they are definitely scattered around so there is no way we're gonna have 500 consistent in a week we basically need a city with a large population that have numerous parks established therefore we will revisit fisher enclave city just to showcase on how to unlock the tourism landmarks this city has a population of 105,000, and we have 1,700 tourists okay so let's go ahead and create our pedestrian district then read the fine print so it says we need 500 weekly tourists in one pedestrian area take note that it did not say anything about buildings on pedestrian streets we just need tourists within a pedestrian area so this actually should be easy so let's take a mental picture of where our purple tourists are then extend our pedestrian areas to them while keeping in mind the original shape of our park areas so you will notice the park alerts as we go over them but do not worry we can fix that after we have unlocked the tourism landmarks so we now have 202 uh, tourists within the area so all we, it, the numbers actually skip so it's not gonna go like 300 it's just gonna go up so let's wait until it reaches 500 okay we got 400 424 just a few more then we'll get the sunken plaza shopping mall and there we have it we have unlocked the final landmark so of course we want to repair the damage that we have caused so i'm going to pause the game and I know how my districts look, so I'm going to go ahead and paint it back in. Okay, there you go. As if uh, nothing happened. Let's uh, actually apply the, the new landmarks and see how it looks. So let's replace a few things. So here's the sunken plaza. Ooh, we got some people coming out. Let's see if we can see people on different floors. Well, we just plot it down, so I don't think we're going to see people yet. But it actually looks really nice. Uh, let's check the other ones. So this is the Museum of Postmodern Art. Looks rather neat. A little too colorful, but well, that is art. Uh, let's check again here. No, I don't see anyone going in. Well, this isn't really a really popular area. Uh, and lastly, we got this, which is the pedestrian street market. Looks really cool. Also, it also has those bollards. Go in, please. Nope, nobody wants to go in. It's completely new. We got the rotate. Whoa, we got a blimp. Uh, we got the Eiffel Tower. That is a nice view. Uh, so one thing to take note about these structures so for example, this one, the pedestrian street market, it has an upkeep cost of 880, which isn't that bad. Uh, while the uh, Museum of Postmodern Art, 1,600, while the Sunken Plaza is 3,360. Now that is, uh, that is painful for your economy. So 
do not rush into getting this early so the the best time to get this is when your city is well established just like fisher enclave city so yeah don't worry if you don't get them early just be patient and get them when it's when you, your economy is uh, stable you got a nice population you got a good number of tourists within your city look how consistent that is and we're still at times three uh, game speed my opinion regarding the pedestrian district mechanics of incurring 50 per cell expense which gets more expensive as the district gets larger is actually a good thing i don't think the developers wanted players to exploit a fully pedestrian city unless you are playing sandbox with unlimited money when you play sandbox, there are no rules, so anything goes. While vanilla players can still enjoy a good challenge of balancing economy, traffic, and whatnot. Everyone sets their own stipulations in their city, and everyone enjoys the game their own way. This is Captain Obvious. Thank you for watching and for choosing to fly with Obvious Airlines. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next flight.